you know what kind of car this is? Does somebody know what it is? It's a Ford Granada GXL 73. And do you know which is the best place to stay in that car? The best place to ride it? It's right here, under the rear window on the shelf. When I was a small girl, I used to lay there, you know, and stay there looking at the sky, looking at the city from below, and that very special perspective. Lying there when I was five, I knew exactly what traffic lights and signs and billboards looked like from below. Tunnels and balconies had that mysterious look. The world didn't know about anything, just me. And without realizing, I was slowly becoming something which was not human. I strangely felt connected to everything which was around me, strangely connected with the city. And then I knew I have been transformed into a spacey. A spacey is a species which belongs to space. The car and I transformed into a highly developed cyber-physical system. The most interesting thing was that I could get to know the lives of others. Well, from this unusual perspective, I understood that the streets are the most important space in the city. And when they were dull, the whole city was dull. How streets are linked, how paths cross, well, the meaning of squares and parks. At that time, it was clear to me that I, the spacey, wanted to continue to build these incredible cities. And, well, 30 years ago, I became an architect and I became an urban planner. And I entered the battle between the private and the public on a time where the city was pronounced to be dead because of the World Wide Web, <laughs> yes. Analog place and space lose the meaning in the World Wide Web, where everyone can be everywhere at any time. And, well, everyone is able to carry the internet in his pocket or at his face. So you can... You, there is no necessity to leave your homes for consuming or even for work or even to have a relationship, since you have one in a million friends on Facebook. So, under this impression, so, uh, sociologists, as well as urban planner, had the vision of the dead city, because it changed into the virtual life of the humans. If you think of a modern street, do you think of cars? rushing from place A to place B as fast as possible, or you think of people strolling around, enjoying themselves. I think the first thing is the quality you associate. But in former times, street was the place where the citizens met. Strolling was also an option. Strolling is going at a speed which makes you feel relaxed and comfortable a speed that is adapted to human perception. However, consciously, moves in the city crossing visible and invisible borders appropriates the urban space and recaptured it. Well, at the same time, when you are in and the person walks around the city, it is also shaping the cityscape. So there is a relation. However, the virtual detaches communicating people from the public space. And the digital world offers a location-independent direct exchange between different groups of people. This is difficult to the material world, since a person can be only in one place at one time. Another problem is the um, commercialization of public space. Since the 80s, shopping culture and public space are fused. Having a cappuccino 
and go shopping. This is the special result of that only serves consumers. But if the shops are closed, they are extremely empty, like deserts. You know, there's nothing happening anymore, and they are the most unsecure spaces in the city at all, because there aren't any people in. Therefore, zoning and monotony rather forces people out than winning them over. Well, local residents and municipalities want green spaces and sidewalks, but developers doesn't want. They really haggle over every inch of an area to build it up. So what happens? The city sells itself out, and the city sells itself cheap. Bureaucracy, as well as technology, clash with the variety of urban lifestyles, the coexist of public space, but the relationship is ambiguous. Oh, sometimes I, you know,、um, you should hear me、uh, talking French. It's much easier. <laughs> okay, the term public space gives unrestricted access at all times. To all residents and all visitors of the city, and the right to use public space free of charge. What happens when I buy myself a coffee to go? Where do I drink it, and why do I throw it away? The private sector takes advantage of the public space. The use of public space. For non-commercial use, has been reduced more and more. It only offers us a small, very concrete fraction of all human experiences. Well, at least it's only the shopping experience. In a nutshell, public space is treated like a private area. For example, pedestrian zones are roofed over. Our cafes and restaurants expand the beer gardens on the sidewalks, and think about the two square meters in front of the ATM, which is a service now for the line waiting. Even when a yoga teacher saves the rent for a studio by giving lessons in the public park, well, you mean, or you might think, this appears to be a revival. Or an enrichment of public space, but it isn't. The public space, which is now a part of a store, a cafe, a restaurant, or even a fitness trail, is no longer accessible for everyone. It becomes restricted to customers only. And I wonder if non-profitable behavior and inconvenience groups of people. Demonstrations, making music, or even strolling, will become forbidden once. The threat of terror is also a disease, I would say, which attacks the public space, and we have to deal with that. We are talking about 9/11, WTC, or the Christmas market in Berlin in 2016. Security considerations are preventing urban societies from presenting themselves in public space and from engaging in controversial meetings. Well, greetings from George Orwell. Think about 1984 or Animal Farm. They are reality today, since、uh, the nationwide observation of public space in Great Britain, or even the.、Um, A social credit system in China, where a whole nation is rating its citizens, and precisely because of this, the city has regained its position as a place of rebellion. In the last ten years, the public spaces has become a place of political representation and demonstration. For example, the Gezi Park, or even the Taksim, or the Maidan. And yeah, the occupying Manhattan, in Manhattan, Wall Street. These are reactions which 
are against military dictatorship and financial economy. And it brings people again on the streets and recovers the public space. And all these movements are named after a public space. Occupy Wall Street, you know, it's more than a street name. It shows us that the public space has a great impact on how people are related to the carbon world again. However, the Internet plays an important role because uh, it shapes people's behavior in the public space. They do communication, they do coordination, and, well, they do also the planning, which later takes place in the public space. Without digital technologies, the city would not be revived. The public space can be seen also as a place of emotion management. Think about Donald Trump and, well, the uh, Yellow Wests in Paris, the G20 riots, and even Greta Thunberg. These people first want to generate emotion before they inspire us to think. Well, however, it is not enough to point out that these people who are shocked in the virtual reality are wrong because they are angry. In public space, we can see both the raging crowds as well as the liberal society. Both have their rights. The use of public space is to support their cause. They can dispute, express emotions and perceive the views of the others. Here, the individual meets the collective reason of our diverse society. The loss of the urban public sphere, which serves the interests of all, means the downfall of urban culture, and I'm, I'm serious in that. Public space can prevent this. We need to get the public space back. In its design, appearance and use, the public space must be both intellectual and physical free space. In this way, it becomes a central demand of the people that interact and coexist in the public space, the spaces. In the city of our days, the public space has another, perhaps more important task. It is a field of human experimentation in the interaction with the virtual world. It is, well, the place of the battle between man and machine. And this only can take place in the city, in the heart of the city, on the public spaces. The analog and the digital, they are opposites. The only interface to the digital public sphere, we heard a lot about huh, today, Facebook and all that kind of social platforms, is the public sphere, is the open-minded, space-free, and, well, recovered place of the city in our uh, digital modernity. This hybrid character makes the public space irreplaceable, and us, we will become their, the true spaces. Aren't you spaces? I think you are. And what can you do to gain back, to win back this public space? Only if we consider the specific conditions of both worlds, the man and the machine, the analog and the digital, the public space for this century can grow into the greatest artifact of mankind, the city itself. And how do you can interact with this public space? Well, spaces constantly transform their surroundings. Spaces aren't passive. They stand their ground and initiate changes. Spaces aim for more diversity in the streets. 
spaces find non-places and transform them to public places just for a while or forever. And spaces organize TED Talks. Well, so space in the city is indeed limited, but it has no absolute size in terms of public space. The buildings and structures are static, but the public space changes. It gives you space for your own imagination. The face of the city is the history of its divided spaces, shared experiences, well, and collective interests. But most of all, it shows, by looking at the public space specifically, what the relationship between people, technology, and institution is about. The public space testifies the togetherness of all of this. The city was and still is a symbol of human creative will and the expression of human decisions. That's why it is not absolute. Me and the little girl became an architect and an urban planner because me and myself are interested in the possibilities of the impossible. And this little girl became, once upon a time, a spacey, transformed into that strange, non-human being, because she told me the only thing which could be faster than any kind of machine, or even faster than reality, is human imagination. And, well, your imagination is able to change space into public space. And this is what I ask you. I'm calling for that. Make public space your own again. Thank you.